What's up guys, uh, welcome back. In today's video, I do a complete rebuild of the front upper and lower control arms on my 100 series Land Cruiser. Um, so I replaced the ball joints and the bushings. I clean things up and, uh, and paint everything and I think the results look really good. Um, I'm also really happy with the improvement to drivability of my old truck. Um, I think the ball joints help a little bit with tightening the steering up and the bushings definitely make a big difference in just the comfort of the car going over speed bumps and potholes and that kind of thing. Um, so this video is one video of an entire series that I'm doing on like everything you need to know to restore drivability of these old Land Cruisers. So check out the link to the playlist, uh, which will be in the description of this video. And the only other thing I'll say is like a job like this one is, uh, it's a pretty big job you always want to consult the full service manual on jobs like this. Uh, you don't want to miss any steps. For example, uh, for this one, you need to do an alignment after taking any of the parts apart. Um, so check that out. And uh, with that said, we'll, we'll get right into it. All right, here's the, uh, the tensioner for the, the torsion bar. It takes a 30 mil socket and you're definitely going to need some sort of extension or breaker bar for leverage. You just have to do that until the uh, tension comes off. And then the next step is take these two 22 millimeter bolts off the end of the torsion bar. Once you got that out of the way, you can crack this one loose. It's uh, 24, but don't remove it. Uh, and crack this guy loose, but don't remove it. Uh, and then you can do this in any order, but next I'm gonna take the brake calibers off. There's two 17 millimeter bolts here and here. And I'm just going to kind of move it out of the way and hang it up. Um, all right, I've got my caliper out of the way and I've gone ahead and removed all of these little 12 millimeter bolts uh, along the ABS sensor wire, the wire harness, just to get it loose. And you can track this wire down to the sensor at the back of the hub, but um, it's really hard to get that sensor out without breaking it. So we're just going to remove this wiring harness because it's attached to the hub or the spindle we're gonna to have to take the spindle off to be able to get to the upper and the lower control arms. Um, so you can kind of just track this wire up to this guy right here and just, you know, disconnect that. Uh, looks like I'll have to get one more bolt off there. But after you get that out of the way, we can kind of proceed with uh, loosening things up. Uh, I've gotten all these loosened up, but not totally off, including the, the bottom there. Um, so to separate each of these ball joints, we just need to kind of smack it with a hammer. So for the bottom one, you can hit it here. Um, for this tie rod end, you can hit right here. And on the upper ball joint, you can hit it kind of anywhere around here. And you'd be surprised how hard you have to hit it to get them to separate. But, you know, just put some muscle into it. You also have to... Uh, take the dust cap cover off, which you can just do with kind of light taps of a chisel and a hammer. And then there's a, uh, a C ring that holds the axle in place that you'll need to take off as well. So that should prepare us to loosen the spindle up and uh, be able to remove it once all of those ball joints are separated. Now we just need to get the control arms off. So for the lower, it's those two uh, 24 millimeter bolts that we left in. For the upper, it's just 19s uh, right here and over here. All right, uh, we got it all off. So lower control arm, hub and spindle, and upper control arm. And here are the mounting bolts for the upper control arm, so you can see what they look like. Um, I'm going to clean all this up because I plan to paint it. Uh, and then I'll show you how to press the, the ball joints out and uh, press out the bushings. All right, um, so I have my push-pull kit and my ball joint press kit. And I'm going to start out with the bushings on the upper control arm. So I have this little ring that just fits perfectly uh, to press them out. So 
with this one, I'd be pressing it that way. But I also need a like a bigger a bigger ring that will go on the outside to uh, receive the bushing, basically. And I've done this with the other side of the car, so I know like you have to have everything lined up perfectly. You can't use one that's too big, uh, you know, that would kind of like rest here and go on crooked. It really all has to be perfect. And the problem with that is that, for example, this one fits over the end of the bushing, but it hits this lip right here. So that lip is great for pressing, pressing the bushings in, but it really makes a pain in the ass uh, to press them out. So the solution I've come up with, and I think this is pretty quick, is to, to use a chisel to kind of beat that lip and bend it under uh, this top part so that when you look at it you know, this way, the profile of that lip would be gone. So that's what I've done on this side already. Uh, I've kind of gone around the edge there and beat that lip in. That probably took 20 minutes or so. And then the, uh, the larger barrel to receive the bushing just slides over um, this new, uh, this, uh, you know, now that I've beat the lip in. So that'll receive the, the other bushing. And you can follow that same process for both the bushings on the upper control arm and the bushing that's in uh, the lower control arm. In fact, I think you'll have to follow that process to use the push-pull kit. Um, I'm sure there are other methods, but this one isn't that bad. It's about 20 minutes per bushing. All right, um, so on the first three bushings, these two and the one that's in the lower control arm, I have the uh, the lips knocked out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and press these out and then uh, then I'll do the fourth bushing, which is on the car. All right, so for the fourth bushing, uh, it's actually in the frame. And uh, this is the only bushing of any of them that has an orientation. So you need to make sure that it goes in the same way that it comes out. Uh, for this one, the, there's a big enough surface over here that we could put a really big receiving cup on this end. So not too worried about that. But um, at least on the other side, I had trouble getting the right size ring. I guess my kit didn't come with a perfect ring for this one. So what I did uh, over there and over here is kind of just beat the edge in a little bit so that the cup has something to, uh, to sit on and, and push out. All right, here's the setup for the, uh, the bushing that's in the frame. I was able to just barely get this uh, set up with the CV axle and uh, should be able to press it out pretty easy now. All right, so next we need to get these ball joints out. Uh, they both have C-clips, which you can just kind of jam something in one side and then hammer the out other side out. Uh, this one C-clip is on the inside here. It might actually have to remove the boot to get to it. And we'll press them out. I have the uh, vise here right on the ball joint with the boot removed and that C-clip removed. And then I just use the, the biggest receiver that's set flush with the, uh, the top of the upper control arm there. So that should come right out. All right, uh, upper's out. And here's the setup for the lower. It's kind of like the reverse. Uh, I have the vise right on the ball joint and then I'm using the, the largest receiver. All right, just real quick. Here's the setup to press the uh, upper control arm bushings in. I've got one that's just resting on the lip of the bushing and then uh, a receiver that sits pretty flush with the UCA. Uh, already got one pressed in, so that's what it looks like. All right, so when you put this bushing back in, 
you've got to orient it correctly. Uh, so there's two tabs on either side that hold this rubber grommet that I've taken off just, just while I press it. Those need to go horizontal and then the white needs to go up. All right, here's the setup for the upper ball joint. Uh, I actually use one of the receivers from the, the push-pull kit. And here's a setup for the lower. So I had to be a little creative here because you need a cup on the top to receive the, the uh, ball joint. But if you do that, you don't have enough room to put another cup on the bottom. So I actually just use one of these stoppers and I took the boot off the ball joint. So actually the end of the ball joint's right there sticking all the way through. Um, and that should allow us to press it in sufficiently. All right, uh, I got everything cleaned up and painted with the ball joints and bushings pressed in. So we're ready for reassembly here. Um, first step is to get the lower control arm on and just attach these back two bolts first. Um, that makes it really easy to get the torsion bar on before you connect anything else. So I got the lower on. Uh, with these two bolts. Uh, for this one, you have to make sure you put the bolts in before you put the lower control arm. This is for the uh, torsion bar. But before you put the torsion bar on, you have to torque this guy down at 170 foot-pounds uh, for both of them. But it needs to be at ride height. So I just measured uh, my other one and made sure it's about the same. Torqued it down to 170. Then you can get this, this guy on right here and here. And both those bolts are 160 foot-pounds, 166 foot-pounds. Uh, I got the shock and the sway bar on. Um, this one's 100 foot-pounds. This one is 38 foot-pounds. Uh, I also have the upper control arm on, and I'm not going to torque it until I get the spindle on, but that's 72 and 72. And to get the spindle on, I'm just going to, I have to feed in the axle first but then I'm gonna to try to get this bolt on um, to secure everything and then tighten it all up. All right, here's sort of a fun update. Uh, I got the lower ball joint on and no matter what I did, I couldn't get the uh, spindle to reach to the upper control arm. And the reason is that my CV axle literally fell apart. So at first I thought it was like, not all the way in the diff, but I checked a bunch of times. It was seated in the diff fine. The issue was that uh, this part of the CV axle literally fell apart. And I noticed, you know, as I was pulling this boot back that the boot was actually stretching. Um, so I cut the, the boot open and these two balls fell out. So obviously that's uh, not the way it's supposed to be. I've had this really bad tear in the boot uh, for a while, which might have contributed to it. Uh, but I'm gonna have to, uh, you know, probably remove this CV axle. Um, I was gonna replace it anyways in a couple weeks, but I might have to speed up that that repair. I was able to get everything back together. You could see the uh, the boot is removed, and if you could tell, there's like a little C ring right here. There's like a, kind of a gap where the, the ring goes around and its job is to hold all of those balls in place or the uh, ball bearing assembly. And I guess it just didn't do its job or these balls like popped past that, which is why, you know, a couple balls were maybe back behind the assembly and I couldn't get uh, the axle back far enough to get this end of the spindle up to the upper control arm. Um, everything's moving fine now, so I'll be able to do that Obviously, I would be driving without a boot on my CV axle. Um, I won't do that very long. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, like I said, prioritize the replacement of these axles, but at least this will this will get me around town to pick the parts up and that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully, if you do this job, you don't have to deal with this because this set me back about two hours or so, but uh, you know, at least we, we figured it out and we're gonna be able to get everything back together. All right, so if you could even believe it, I've suffered another setback on this project. Uh, I was doing the last step of getting the spindle kind of attached to this upper control arm ball joint, and it's totally seized. 
Uh, I noticed that when I pressed it in, I caved the top in. So I probably should have used a bigger fitting to press, you know, around this stronger part here. Um, but, you know, so that was a big mistake. Probably set me back a few days and another 30, 40 bucks. But uh, hopefully you can learn from that mistake and, and uh, avoid it if you do the same job. All right, guys, I got the uh, ball joint in the mail and pressed in. Um, so the job is finished, although it definitely took longer than I expected. Uh, just gonna go over torque specs real quick. Uh, this guy and this one on the upper control arms are 72 foot pounds. This one is 81, um, 90 right here, 91 on both of the bolts that mount the caliper. And at the bottom here, uh, 117 foot pounds. So that's it guys. Uh, thanks for watching.